This is Reasonable Doubt with your hosts, Mark Garrigus and Gary Smith. Well, happy uh, Sunday, Gary. Uh, how's your Sunday morning so far on this, uh, the, the altar of Bard? It's going great. Thanks, Mark. How about you? I've got no complaints, none, none whatsoever. Um, you know, we had um, one thing that we didn't play last week, I think, right? That uh, was that the whistleblower. Yeah, I think that's a, that was one we didn't get to last week. So why don't we start there today? And I'll go ahead and I'll uh, I'll play a clip here. This had uh, this had Twitter ablaze early this week. Okay. Did you uncover evidence that President Biden financially benefited from his son's deals? I don't feel comfortable answering that question. Why is that? Anytime we potentially wanted to go down the road of asking questions related to the president, it was that's going to take too much approvals. We can't ask those questions. And I mean, it created it created an environment that was very hard to deal with. It's a politically sensitive case. Wouldn't it require additional approvals? Yes, I do understand that that aspect, but it would be like, well, let's think about it. Let's put that on the back burner. Sorry, what did, you know, the and that did uh, I I think you can you can view that in two different ways. I think, number one, you can say, as the interviewer was suggesting, that it would require more approvals. You, you, you don't uh, come after the, uh, the commander in chief uh, without getting the appropriate approvals. Uh, but I think, on the other hand, he's making it seem like they were being thwarted um, and that the investigation couldn't go there. Is that your take on it, the, the, that he's implying that the investigation was thwarted in some way? Yeah, certainly. He's he's trying to paint a picture that, you know, while it was framed as though there was, you know, no interference whatsoever, that any time they tried to go down a road that might potentially be bumpy, that they were, you know, thwarted and told not to not to go there because it just wasn't going to wasn't going to end up happening. Yeah, it's kind of a, I, you know, I'm, I would, uh, I, if there's a longer form of that interview, um, I think it would be very helpful to see exactly whether or not they were, um, uh, he was implying that there, there was some kind of interference or whether he was saying it was just too, um, too much of a chore, so to speak, to get uh, answers to the questions or or to get approvals to ask the questions. Yeah. From what I've seen in, in other clips, it just seems like he's saying that anytime they tried to ask a question that was going to be somewhat sensitive or, or maybe lead down a bumpy road that they were told, you know, by their superiors, that it's just not even go there because the end result was going to be a waste of time. That's very interesting. Very interesting. You know, the uh, the uh, there's been so much going on um, with uh, Hunter in the last um, maybe eight months to a year. Um, I, I think that uh, they they certainly have uh, focused on him and are are focusing even more, especially if it's a um, uh, if it's going to be a uh, Biden reelection bid. Uh, I, I uh, the guys in the crosshairs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, his uh, attorneys this week filed an ethics complaint against Marjorie Taylor Greene, who showed some images that were purportedly from his uh, stolen or his uh, lost laptop uh, on the floor of the house. Uh, she she held up some images that were showing him in a compromised position. And now they're uh, they're filing ethics complaints as a result of that. Yeah, so uh, that, that'll be interesting, uh, the, uh, whether she'll wrap herself up in the speech and debate clause and uh, and uh, invoke that or whether the ethics committee, I, I would suppose the ethics committee is the one who can police that. But I'm I'm not sure um, the whether she doesn't have immunities um, uh, for that. It's an interesting quandary as well. Yeah, we'll uh, keep an eye on that and see how it plays out. Um, another another uh, story that caught my attention this week was the uh, the sanctions for Alan Dershowitz in the uh, Carrie Lake lawsuit. Did you see this story? Yeah, I did. I mean, they, with the, I don't know enough about this, so why don't you? Because I I thought that 
he had escaped the sanctions, but then the order you sent, it looks like that the, it was not the case. Yeah, they he basically tried to uh, he tried to assert that he was not, in fact, counsel and that he was just basically, uh, you know, uh, aiding in the uh, in the, the case. And the Arizona Arizona courts determined, no, you signed these these orders and you put your name on these and therefore you are sanctioned. You are subject to sanction. And uh, he ended up having to uh, having to to uh under let's see here uh under uh 19 1927 liability so uh so in the end the professor is liable for 10 percent of the uh, one hundred and twenty two thousand dollar attorney's fees awarded oh so they didn't make a joint several so he only has to pay 10 percent of the entitled of, of the total amount that's correct yeah that's you know that uh I suppose uh, that that makes some sense as well. Although, you know, uh, we haven't had him on um, for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, I think we ought to reach out and I'd love to hear his side of this and, um, and give him the opportunity to, to tell us what really happened. Yeah, absolutely. Um, going to, uh, to our friends over at LA magazine, there was a story this week pres- uh, reported by our, uh, great reporter, Michelle McPhee about the, uh, LAPD, LAPD zeroing in on, uh, the leaker from the, uh, you'll remember the, uh, councilmen, uh, who were recorded saying racist and derogatory things about different members of their constituents. And it's now, uh, been revealed that that was recorded by, uh, Santos Leon, who was, whose wife was the executive assistant to a uh, former federal fed boss uh, ron herrera and uh it turns out that he recorded uh, downloaded recording software on his work computer and then planted that laptop in various rooms where uh, his superiors would be meeting and discussing things yeah the, you know that story originally i think was misreported i mean i'm going to get into the weeds on that in the next show because i think there's going to be things that are happening this week. But I, 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 I think that Michelle was closer to getting what this thing um, correct than any of the reports that had previously been made, because there was quite a bit of political shenanigans going on um, at, at the time. And uh, and I think that there's probably a different side to the story as well coming up. Yeah, it's as the story has kind of evolved, it has to do, you know, uh, more with uh, with, you know, a personal relationships, it seems than politics. You know, it, it, it appears that this has to do with uh, this gentleman fearing that his wife was being persuaded to leave him. And, uh, you know, it's it seems very intricate. Yeah, the the um, the uh, we'll have a we'll have a better explanation of what's really going on by the time we record next week. Yes. OK. Uh, moving to more national news, the uh, Alabama has drawn a second uh, map after being ordered by the Supreme Court to redraw their uh, their their map of uh, congressional districts. And they were ordered to draw a map that had two majority black congressional districts. And they defied that and decided to draw one that was majority and one that was about 40 percent. Yeah, you know, they they want to go get uh, slapped by uh, SCOTUS again is going to be my guess. Yeah, I it's would gonna, I would think so. And I just going up and down the uh, the circuit court uh, to to the to the uh, to try to get a somebody give you a different opinion. I you know it's uh, if this court was pretty clear, SCOTUS was pretty clear on what uh, they wanted to see done, and this was obviously not it. Yeah, it's it it seems like they're just asking for a fight. I I don't understand why exactly they would just straight up defy the Supreme Court like this, you know, so quickly. It just seems like they're asking to go back right in front of them. Yeah, I'm I'm not so sure uh, that they aren't testing how close they get as a in terms of numbers. And uh, the, the it'll be interesting to see if the Supreme Court then takes that and says, no, majority means majority. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, all right. So we've got a lot of strikes going on, especially here in our neck of the woods. We've got the uh, the writers on strike. We've got the actors on strike. And now it appears that we've got the Teamsters lining up and uh, ready to strike as well. And uh, that's going to have a big impact on UPS and and probably many other businesses as well. 
it, it sure will. That uh, that's going to bring things to a screeching halt uh, uh, here if uh, the, they join in as well. I mean, the it's tough enough, uh, it, uh, tough enough in this town, and that'll make it even tougher. Yeah, I, and I, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, people who have gotten used to their Amazon Prime deliveries on a hourly basis uh, are going to adapt to something like that. Right. Just what we need is more uh, less uh, less uh, deliveries and uh, more traffic. Um, the the it's it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. I mean, at a certain point, you know, the 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 kind of consensus was that. The studios were going to wait, wait it out six months and see if they could kind of break their backs. That was part of what um, was being reported. And and, uh, then now uh, I don't know that anybody calculated that there was going to be this kind of coalesce, uh, coalescing of unions um, to do what they're doing. So, like I said, that'll that'll be another uh, the unexpected consequence of the strikes here. Jewelry is having a big moment right now. And with hundreds of products popping up in your feed every day, it can be hard to find a brand you trust. Alex and Ani has been creating meaningful jewelry for over 20 years, designing pieces that connect you with all of life's important moments. With an emphasis on value, there's truly something for everyone. You might be most familiar with their signature charm bangle. This bracelet literally creates created the category of meaningful jewelry and had you stacking charms from your wrist to your elbow. This piece is an icon for a reason. Completely size inclusive, each bracelet is adorned with a symbol designed to tell your story and express your unique style. Beyond the bangle, you'll find stylish, affordable jewelry for every occasion, from classic pieces to bold statement looks. Don't know where to start? Alex and Ani makes it easy to unpack the trends you're after and sprinkle in your personality too. Each piece comes with a personalized message and meaning, Truly making it the perfect gift. You can take comfort in knowing that you're shopping with a socially conscious brand as well. To date, Alex and Ani has donated over $60 million to nonprofits worldwide, connecting fashion and philanthropy in an easy, fun, affordable way. Visit alexandani.com right now to discover the confidence that comes with a perfectly accessorized piece of jewelry. Right now, Alex and Ani is offering our audience 20% off with code MIDAS at checkout. Again, head to alexandani.com. That's A. L E X A N D A N I dot com and use code Midas at checkout for twenty percent off your order. Yeah, and we've also got the uh, the hotel workers and and other various unions in L A. I mean, obviously this is a very local story, but we've got a we've just got all kinds of strikes going on across L A. And you can often hear them from the uh, from the Los Angeles Magazine offices. It's uh, it's been a, a very busy summer for people striking. Yeah. You're not kidding. You're not kidding. Well, speaking of busy, a busy summer, um, you get uh, your little one and go hit the beach today or do something fun. And uh, I'm going to do the same. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Talk to you, Gary. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to Reasonable Doubt. Subscribe on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Reasonable Doubt Podcast.